Hello everyone, in today's After Effects scripting tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make a dockable UI script. So if I go ahead and run this sample script we've made, we have a button to create a composition, one to delete the active composition, and one to close the script. But we really want to see this in After Effects, so if I go to Window and my dockable UI base, I can go ahead and say pop it over here on the side, and I can say create a comp, and now that I have this composition, I can select it and delete it. So the main purpose of today is to learn how to make a dockable UI. And this would be useful for making a script that is something that needs to always be open and upfront in After Effects. So I'll go ahead and load up Extend Script here. About 60 lines of code to write today. Let's go ahead and open a new JavaScript file. The first thing we're going to want to do to create a dockable script is to do an open and close bracket and we're going to put in some functions and our UI inside of here. The first function we're going to define is going to be called my script. And inside of here we're going to pass the argument this object, the brackets for our function. And then we're going to have a function within my script called my script and then something like build the UI or build. And we're also going to pass this object through this function. And now we're going to set up a variable called my panel. This is just going to basically be a variable representing our UI. So we're going to set my panel equal to this object. And we're going to check if it's an instance of a panel. If not, then we're going to take this object and create a new window. And just like any time we create a window, we'll make it a palette window call this a dockable script and we'll have undefined size then as well I like to add in a couple of extra parameters for a dockable script the first one is to be resizable so to do this inside of the fourth argument we're going to go ahead and put in resizable and we'll set that equal to true and then also we're going to set the close button in the top right corner to false then we'll add a semicolon to close that out. Now you might think this would run, but because we have these functions inside of the brackets here, later on we're going to be adding these in and that will generate our UI. So now let's go ahead and design our UI. What we're going to want to do is set a variable called res, which is just an arbitrary variable we're using. We're gonna set this equal to the different groups and elements that go inside of our window. So the first thing we can create is a group. The syntax for dockable scripts is a little bit different, but we'll go over here. And when we define something, we want to put brackets on the same line. And for this first group, I'm just going to set the orientation to single string column. So we're going to wrap all of the things in double quotes, and any text that is defining orientation or properties is going to be in single quotes. I should mention that this main group we're making here is more equivalent to a window because we're going to be making groups inside of it. So the way to close out a line of this kind of UI is to simply type in comma and forward slash and then we'll press enter. And then for our closing bracket right here we're going to end it with a double quotation as well as a semicolon. And now anything we put inside of here is also going to be in our UI. So let's start off by making an actual group called group one. And we're gonna set this equal to a group. So it basically goes variable name and then the type of element. And again, we're gonna add brackets. And inside of here, we're going to set our orientation equal to row. Make sure it's single quotes. And then I'm gonna close out with a comma and a slash. Move this bracket down here and add another comma and slash after that. And inside of the first group, I'm going to add a button just like we had in the example. So we'll just call this the create conf button. We'll add a colon and set that equal to a button. And inside of here, we're going to set the text of the button to say create comp. And then to end this line, since it's just an element, not a group, we'll put in our comma slash. And now everything's working out okay. If we were to try and run this though, it's not going to do anything. So let's go ahead and initialize this so that it will run for us. Below our ending quotation mark here, we're gonna tap down 
we're going to make some space here and we're going to say my panel which is our window we defined up here dot grp which is referencing everything in the groups basically and we're going to set that equal to my panel dot add and we're going to add res which is all of our data in here if we run this we're still not going to get the results we're looking for so let's go ahead and make sure we can see our ui beneath adding our res variable we're going to say my panel and we're going to call the layout and set the layout to be true and then we're going to return my panel now we're going to close out of the first function here and into the next one inside of here we'll define a variable called my script pal and we'll set this equal to my script and our build ui function and we're going to pass through this object and this right here is actually going to run our build ui and pass through a variable now we'll make a few new spaces here and do an if statement and we're going to check my script pal that's the variable we just set and we're going to say if it's not equal to null basically meaning it doesn't exist and my script pal is an instance of a window so if this hasn't been created yet and it's also a window we're going to do something inside of our check here we're going to say my script pal dot center and my script pal dot show now if we try and run it it's still not working there's one more thing we do need to add we're going to get outside of our if statement here and go outside of the next bracket so we just have one here on the bottom and inside of here we're simply going to say my script and we're going to pass this through now if we go ahead and run this you can see we finally have our dockable script working so let's review really quick of how this is basically working we have these two brackets that are enclosing everything that our script is going to be composed of here our first function is called my script we're passing this object through which is basically going to be equivalent of our panel we're about to create speaking of which our panel is going to check if this object is an instance of a panel and if it's not we're going to make a new window called the dockable script which we can resize and not close out of. then we're setting up a variable called res which we're just setting to a string of information that is equal to a ui then we're grabbing my panel and all the groups and we're going to add our res string into that then we're going to set the layout to true and return my panel so that way when we go down here and set my script pal equal to my script underscore build ui it's going to return my panel setting my script pal equal to our entire ui then it's going to check my script pal if it doesn't exist or is null and it's an instance of a window which it is then we're going to center the script and show it and then we're just going to call my script which is this main function here and pass my script pal through it all right now that we've gone over the difficult basics of creating a dockable script let's go ahead and finish up our ui i'm going to go to the line here below our group one and i'll set up group two here we're going to set this one equal to a panel just to change up the visuals a bit and just like before we'll set the orientation and in this case let's go with row comma slash bring down the bracket here and inside of group two we're going to add a delete comp button and just some static text so we'll first define our delete comp button this is going to be defined as a button and its text is just going to be a minus sign so we can remove it and then we'll close this bracket here and our line and then right below that we'll say delete text and we'll set this equal to static text which we're going to set the text inside of it to say delete active comp close that bracket and end the line and finally we'll add group three here which is just going to have our close button so we'll say group three it's going to be a group its orientation we're going to set to row just like the other ones and that line and down here we'll end the bracket and then we're just going to create a button called the close button set that equal to a button and its text is going to say close all right now if we go ahead and run our script you can see that we now have our create comp button 
our delete active comp button, and our close button, which all have no functionality currently. The place I like to usually add functionality to dockable scripts is right below the adding res right here. So I'll just put in a comment here that says defaults slash functionality and all of the UI event listeners and sizes and things like that will be contained in here. So the first thing I've noticed is our minus button is pretty big. I just want this to be a square like 25 by 25. So to get any UI element in here, the first thing we're going to call is my panel. We're going to call GRP or the whole group of everything here. And then we'll grab the group that it's in, in this case group 2, and it's called the delete comp button. And then we'll just grab the size and set it equal to two values, 25 by 25. So if we take a look at this, you can see our button's a little bit nicer in size there. Let's go ahead and add some functionality to our close button since we don't really have the ability to close these windows. So below our size here, I'm going to grab this close button. Again, we'll type in my panel, GRP for the whole group. This is in group three and it's called the close button. And then we'll just say on click, it equals a function. And then we'll put in some code in here, which is just going to say my panel dot close. So let's go ahead and run this one more time here. Now, if we click on the close button, it's going to actually close our script. All right, so the last thing to do is add functionality to the two other buttons. So let's go ahead and do these in order here. The first button is going to reference my panel dot grp and group one, and it's called the create comp button. And again, we'll say on click equals function. And then we'll do the same for the delete comp button. We'll grab my panel grp group two and the delete comp button. And when we click on that, we'll set it equal to a function. And now after all of this code here, I'm gonna set up two functions. The first one we'll call create comp, and the second one we'll call delete active comp. And for this one, we're gonna pass the composition through that we want to delete. So for our create comp button, we're just going to set this equal to our create comp function. And then for our delete comp button, we're first gonna to wanna to check if they have a composition selected. So we'll check if in our application After Effects in the current project, if the active item, or basically the active window here, if it's equal to undefined, or the active item is equal to null, which means there aren't any active items, we're gonna tell the user to please select a composition, and then we're going to return false, which will basically exit out of this onclick function here, and return us to the UI doing nothing. But if it's not, we'll say else. So every situation there is an active item that's a composition, we're going to call the delete active comp function. And for the comp parameter that we need to pass through, we're just going to grab app.project.active item. And now we can work on our functions down here. Inside of our create comp, we just need to have one line of code. We'll grab app.project and we'll reference the items and we're gonna to wanna to add a new item or a comp. The first argument is our composition name, which I'll just call new composition. And then we'll have the width, the height, the pixel aspect ratio, the duration in seconds, and the frame rate. And then in the delete active comp, all we're gonna say is comp.remove and that will remove it from the list of items as well as the active item. All right, so this is looking really good here. Let's run it. So we're done in extend script here. We just need to find out how we can view this in After Effects and actually dock it. If I was just to link this to After Effects and run it, I'm not going to be able to dock it anywhere. So what we need to do is save our extend script file, navigate to your After Effects version. In my case, I'm using 2017. And we'll go into the scripts folder and we need to save it in the script UI panels folder. So we'll just call this doc tutorial and save it in there. Now if we go into After Effects, we need to go ahead and restart it really quick. And now if we go up to window, 
And at the bottom here, we should see all of our script UI panels. If we load up our doc tutorial, we can go ahead and pop it in here and resize it to our liking. We can go ahead and create a composition. And now if we open up that composition, we can select it and delete it. And we can also close the script. But the functionality of a close button in a dockable script isn't that useful because we can just click on this and close the panel. So you might want to consider removing that. All right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. That's how to create a dockable script for After Effects. Be sure to check out the other Extend Script tutorials or any of the other videos on this channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button as well as that bell button right next to it to make sure you're notified when any new videos are coming out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.